Hi, this is April from Kindle Fire at KindleNationDaily.com. There's our URL, fire.kindleNationDaily.com. In this video, I'm going to be talking about using the music player functionality of the Kindle Fire. You don't need to download any special apps or software. The music player functionality is built right into the Kindle Fire and it's accessible through this menu item, Music. And it's important to mention that any of the MP3 songs or albums that you download from Amazon are entirely compatible with iTunes, iTunes Match, and iCloud. In fact, if you download your Amazon MP3s on the same computer where you have iTunes installed, they will import to iTunes automatically. You don't have to take any extra steps. It's completely transparent and simple. Now, first off, I want to apologize that the text here may not be very legible. It's a limitation of file size and video resolution in these types of videos. But if you take out your own Kindle Fire, and just sort of follow along. I don't think you'll have any difficulty duplicating the steps that I'll be demonstrating here for yourself. Now the first thing I want to point out is that just like all the content menus on your Fire, there's a tab at the top for cloud and for device. And the difference here is the cloud is where all of your digital content that comes from Amazon is stored by default when you first buy it or download it if it was free content. And then device is the digital content that you've actually taken that extra step to download to the memory right on the device. Now, the reason why Amazon has their system set up this way, cloud and device, instead of just automatically loading everything right onto your Kindle Fire, is because the Kindle Fire has limited onboard memory. And if you have a very large media library, which of course Amazon hopes that you will, you will very quickly run out of space on your Kindle Fire. So the solution to this is to store everything on the cloud, which is basically a huge collection of hard drives that Amazon is maintaining somewhere and they have all kinds of uh, server duplication and backup going on so the content will always be there and available and um, it's accessible only through the internet. So anytime you want to access your content that isn't downloaded to the device, you need to be within range of a Wi-Fi hotspot or connected to a Wi-Fi network. And um, that's because any content that you're accessing from the cloud is going to be either streaming live or being transmitted for download over the internet. So if you know that there's some content, whether it's music, books, videos, apps, whatever, that you're going to want to use when you're not sure whether you'll have Wi-Fi connectivity, you're going to want to download that to the device so that content will show up on your device. Then when your device starts to get too full and you need to free up space, you can always just remove things from the device. It doesn't remove the content from the cloud that original purchased or downloaded copy is always going to be there. You can always re-download it in the future whenever you like. So you can see here that under device I only have one album here on my device. If I go to cloud I have many more albums that are just stored in the cloud. Now this is because most of the time I do have Wi-Fi connectivity so it's no problem for me to be streaming music this way without actually having it right on my device. But an important thing to point out here is, well, this menu, playlists, artists, albums, and songs is the same whether you have device selected or cloud. The way that the playlist function works is slightly different. Um, if you want to create a playlist, it's completely dependent on whether you have cloud or device selected. Right now I have cloud selected, so I'm going to be creating a playlist that will be stored on the cloud and will only contain music from the cloud. If I want to create a playlist on the device that contains music from the device, I have to have device selected. You can't have a mixture 
of cloud content and device content on a single playlist. It's an either or situation. Okay, so with cloud selected, by default, Amazon has these options, latest purchases, latest uploads. I didn't create those, they were just there automatically. And then I can create playlists using this create new playlist option. Now here's a playlist that I had created previously. So I want to be able to demonstrate how you make changes after you've created a playlist. Let's say that once I created this, I change my mind about it, I want to change the name or delete it. Like most content on the Kindle Fire, you just tap and hold to bring up a submenu of options. And here your choices are download the playlist, because I have a cloud playlist selected, that's one of the options. You can create a cloud playlist and then in one fell swoop, download all of the content from that playlist to the device. Add the playlist to now playing, add more songs, rename the playlist, or delete. I'm going to choose delete and it will ask me to confirm. Okay, so if I want to create a playlist, this function works the same whether I have cloud or device selected. The only difference is the type of content that I can use. If cloud is selected, it's only cloud content. If device is selected, only device. So I'm going to create a new playlist and this one I'm just going to call test and then I save. Now it's going to take me to a list of all of the tracks that are available for me to add to my playlist. And adding them to the playlist is as simple as just tapping the little plus sign icon to the right of the track and it shows me a little confirmation that the track was added. So I'll just add a few more. Okay, so now I'm done. I'll tap done. And once the playlist is created, it takes me to the playlist and it shows me the album icons, the track titles, I can either select shuffle and play to have it automatically shuffle the list and just play the tracks in random order, or I can select the first track in the list to have it play in order. And then here's that little download icon again. I don't have to go to that submenu to bring up this function. Once I've created a cloud playlist, if I decide I want to download all of that content to my device, I can do so just by tapping this little icon here. So that's kind of handy and then edit will bring up those functions to edit the playlist. Now once you decide to start playing some music it brings up a slightly different interface for the music player. I'll just show you that now. Okay so what you have here is the album cover. You have a progress bar. This little crawl is showing the name of the album up here we have the song title. This is a shuffle icon, skip back, pause or play, skip forward, and repeat. And this is a volume bar, which is a little bit more handy than having to go through the tools menu like you normally would. Okay, so you see that when I tapped it to pause, it changed back to a play icon. Now what I'm going to show you next is one of the cool things about the music player on the Kindle Fire. You can play music in the background while you're doing other things on the Fire. So I'll start the music. Uh, I'm going to skip to the next track. It's a little bit quieter. Okay, but you can hear the music is playing. Now I can go back to the main menu and the music continues to play but it adds this icon for my new playlist to the carousel to make it real handy and accessible. The music is still playing. I can open a book and the music is still playing in the background. I can play a game This is uh, Words with Friends. And while I am playing the game, my music is still playing in the background. 
So you can listen to music in the background while you're using any type of media on your Kindle Fire that doesn't have music of its own. Okay, now if I want to quickly go back and um, turn off the music or skip to the next track or what have you, I can just go back to my playlist here. And whenever you start playing music, it shows this now playing bar, which will always show you whatever was the last thing that you were playing. Um, when you tap on it, it opens up the full interface. But even without tapping on it, you have some controls here. Skip back, skip forward, pause. Now, if for some reason you don't want whatever you last played to be showing here, what you can do is to tap the context sensitive menu icon that's always right down here in the middle, no matter what you're doing on your fire. And from there you have downloads, now playing, settings, or help. Tap on settings, and you can select clear cache. And that will clear out whatever was showing in the now playing bar. Now if you don't clear the cache, then you can close your music player and the next time you go back to it, it will remember whatever was the last thing you were playing before. So um, it's kind of up to you, you know, what your preference is, whether you want it to go right back to what was there before or just start fresh. Other choices here are to enter a claim code. That's if you have a coupon code to get free music from the Amazon MP3 store. Um, there's lock screen controls. This is kind of cool. You know after a period of inactivity on the Kindle Fire, the screen will go dark to save battery. Well, when you have music playing, um, it can be kind of a hassle to have to go turn it back on to hit pause or adjust the volume or whatever. If you turn on lock screen controls, music player controls will stay active on the screen even after that screen darkening happens from lack of other activity. Then you can enable an equalizer. You can change your delivery preferences for your music, whether you want your music to automatically download to your device or just by default go to the cloud. Um, and then also refresh cloud drive. That would be for a case where you are away from your Kindle Fire or away from a Wi-Fi connection. Maybe you're at work on your lunch hour, you download some music from the MP3 store and then you get home, turn on your fire, and you want to refresh your music list with the new content that you just added. Uh, one other thing I want to mention about the whole music functionality here and Amazon's music store is that personally I find it easier to browse the music store online than I do in the um, Kindle Fire device itself. There's a link here for the music store and it will take you to the store and it shows some featured albums here and there is a search function but you don't have all the same advanced search functions and it doesn't have all the same um, pre-categorized lists that you would find on the main Amazon site so particularly if you want to search by price that's a great way to find free music in the mp3 store you can just go to the advanced search function and search by price, enter zero, and it will bring up hundreds of free MP3s and many, many free MP3 albums. Most of the music that I have in the cloud consists of free samplers that I downloaded. And you can always listen to samples right there on the product pages, decide if it's even worth the time to download. And, um, you know, worst case scenario, you decide after you've downloaded something free that it's not quite your cup of tea, well, you can just remove it from your device. So um, definitely don't hesitate to check out some of the new and rising artist sort of content that they have there on Amazon. And um, just enjoy the music functionality on your Fire. So once again, I'm April from Kindle Fire at Kindle Nation Daily. Here's the URL, fire.kindlenationdaily.com. If you go to our site, you're going to find lots of great articles about um, bargain alerts and content reviews, tips and tricks, content geared specifically for kids, lots more to find there on our site, including um, categorized sortable lists 
that are a little bit easier for finding content than what you might find on Amazon. So we hope to see you there, and as always, thanks for watching.